Assassin's Creed Origins DLC The Curse of the Pharaohs comes out on the 13th of March, and sees Bayek travelling to Thebes and the Valley of the Kings to solve mysteries in a story that focuses on ancient Egyptian mythology. Here's a spoiler warning for the first two hours of the DLC, because it doesn't only add the opportunity to raise your level and wander around regular old ancient Egypt. It also contains new mystical areas, which are home to a few things that will haunt your nightmares. Oh, and here they are. Sorry. She comes for me. I stole nothing. Turn to the door. Why do the pharaohs punish These us? These people are innocent. Our moon protect us all. When you start off this DLC, you really are chucked in the deep end. Within the first minute, you're already dealing with a terrifying undead mummy, who's tearing up the town square and taking out half the populace with their stabby stabby daggers. The mummies in this game are not your traditional horror flick shambling zombies. Instead, having lightning fast attacks and requiring heavy use of the dodge button. The abomination comes for us all! Fortunately, this one clears off before completely destroying everything, but that doesn't mean it's gone forever. Much like the Phylax hunting Bayek down in the main game, these mummies can turn up randomly as you wander around Thebes, with the game warning you about them when they do. However, instead of constantly walking around, these reanimated mummies pop up at various points, and you're not always near enough to go give them trouble. But one place where you can't help but face these angry zombies is in their resting places, and we don't just mean their empty real-world tombs. See, in each tomb there is a path to… well the afterlife. In the realm of the dead, specifically Aru in this case, you must help put a mummy's spirit to rest by beating the crap out of it. Here, there are no civilians nearby to act as distractions, leading to a rather intense boss fight and heavy use of your adrenaline fueled attacks. However, don't rush in, as you've got plenty more things to worry about before you get to this stab-happy mummy. Are you a thief? A desecrator? Do you steal from the dead? The gods? Gods on food, drunken, debauched? Wear the hooded eyes of lust. When you first cross over into the world of the dead through a portal in the tomb of Queen Nefertiti, you've got a weird looking welcome party. You should not have Egyptian mythology buffs will be well aware that the god Anubis was in charge of all things underworldy. This jackal headed being watched over the dead and was also the god of embalming. However, were you also aware that the bridge to the land of the dead was guarded by four Anubis looking warriors? No? Well, the more you know. It turns out they're not restricted to just some bridge, because once you're in, you bump into these canine warriors all over the place, and boy, do they not like you. Offended at the idea of a living person in their realm and almost cheating yourself into Ancient Egypt's version of heaven, they'll do whatever they can to make you, well, not living. Not only are they seriously dangerous, but they also just look super creepy, with their blue-grey skin and golden highlights, and big weird dog-like feet to match their heads. Look, doggy paws look cute on doggos, but on these guys? Ugh. Plus, when you fight them, they have a horrible habit of shouting at you in scarily demonic voices. It's my and as if that weren't enough, some of them can bring their mates back from the dead after you've beaten them. Oi, no, that's cheating. Down, boy. What is this? Can this be Aru? When you first make it into Aru after the Bridge of Furious Dog Guys, you meet some really weird ladybirds. And no, we don't mean the cute red bugs, we mean these human headed bird monstrosities. In all honesty, they're not ugly per se, just undeniably unsettling. They're far more chill than their doggo buddies, and yet they still manage to creep the hell out of us. 
Similar in appearance to mythological harpies or sirens, these avian abominations are most likely inspired by Ba, spiritual manifestations of the soul in ancient Egyptian culture. We found them flapping around by the gate of Aru, implying that they might be souls at the end of their journey to the afterlife. So, ghost birds. Even better. And even though they don't attack you, they do shout things in your general direction, which, knowing ancient Egypt, are all probably curses or something. <laughs> Turns out you can find more than one type of sting in fields of gold. The ancient Egyptian goddess Serket was the goddess of various things, including scorpions and the afterlife. She could punish people with the venom of a scorpion, but also give breath to the dead and help them be reborn in the afterlife. This maybe explains why there are lots of giant scorpions in the land of the dead, which are, in two words, bloody terrifying. <laughs> Yes, we believe the phrase nightmare fuel was inspired by these very creatures, who want nothing more than to murder you with their claws, stingers and gross green venom. And they don't look much better after you've exterminated them. What's more, while other enemies can't see you crouching in these fields of what we assume is wheat, it seems like the scorpions can spot you easily if you're in front of them. They'll come straight for you if you get too close, which is especially horrifying when you only see them at the last second. Yeah. Chain assassination. Yes. yes. Chain. Yes, sir. Today. That guy. Chain him. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh no! Oh, why? <laughs> why, scorpion? Why? Why? Oh no! They have magic anti-stealth. Detection technology! Ah, me. At least once you know they're out there, they're pretty easy to keep an eye out for, since their grotesque, stingy tails can be seen above the tall grass, giving away their location and helping you keep the hell away from them. Ugh. In a mystical map that's not too small, you're gonna want a beast of burden to help you get around, and also the hell away from all the mystical critters trying to murder you. When you take Bayek into the Land of the Dead though, he's not accompanied by whichever trusty steed you've already bonded with, so when you call for your buddy, Aru provides an alternative. The stallion of death. Can the living even ride this beast? The aptly named Stallion of Death is a beautifully creepy black horse, with ornate gold headgear and decorations. We like to think the eagle is because he's a big fan of Senu. Despite Bayek's understandable initial concerns, the Stallion of Death does let you on it, and is as patient as every other horse in the Assassin's Creed series, carrying you out of many scrapes and out of the path of some of the even stranger modes of transport around here. As you wander the fields of this new world, you'll see lots of vessels you'd usually find along the waters of the Nile. Yes, as if all the freaky creatures weren't enough of a sign that Bayek isn't in Kansas anymore, there are ships sailing atop the grassy plains. They admittedly look cool and otherworldly, but think twice before hopping aboard. They're covered in our doggy-headed death pals, so really, they're floating death traps. These brawl barges are best admired from a distance if you don't want to get stuck into too much combat or are still not over those disturbing Anubis dudes. Whoa. Fans of the Assassin's Creed series will be familiar with how players are corralled within certain boundaries through the threat of desynchronization. In the Land of the Dead, things work a little differently. Instead of the world turning all pixely when you wander out of bounds, a sandstormy mist comes down around Bayek, turns him around and transports him back into the map. Did you want to see how far those infinite statues go? Sorry pal, you'll be running forever, always coming back to where the actual game is. It's a classic Assassin's Creed way to deal with the problem of an afterlife that is flat and possibly infinite. Who can say? I flunked out of ancient Egyptian metaphysics.
With Aru being made of boundless fields, we also have a theory that the area of the afterlife you first find yourself in is not the only one you'll find yourself in. With multiple cursed pharaohs for you to deal with in the DLC, we're hoping for an area for each pharaoh, even if they are packed with more giant scorpions. So those are just a few of the unsettling things you'll find in the new Assassin's Creed Origins DLC, Curse of the Pharaohs. Which one sends the most shivers down your spine? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, and uh, if you like and subscribe, we'll try put a good word in for you over in Aru. Cheers. Bye.